The big news is that around a very nearby cold small star, we found seven rocky Earth-sized planets, all of which could potentially have liquid water. For me, it's mind-blowing. The first time I saw what the system had in it, I just was like, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> and then I looked at the data myself, I'm like, yep, yeah, there they all are. It's just. I would have never predicted this. It's beyond, you know, anything I could have ever dreamt of. I felt super excited, amazed by the existence, the very existence of this system was was kind of of yeah, of shock. standing on one of these planets, you'd actually see a lot of them sort of in the sky whipping by on these very short orbital periods. It is an excellent, fantastic discovery. I'm excited to announce today that Dr. Mikel Gion and his team have used our Spitzer Space Telescope to determine that there are actually seven Earth-sized planets orbiting the nearby TRAPPIST-1 star about 40 light years away. What's more, as you can see in this illustration, is that three of these planets, marked in green, are in the habitable zone where liquid water can pool on the surface. In fact, with the right atmospheric conditions, there could be water on any of these uh, planets. So for the first time, we found as many terrestrial planets around a single star, and that's the first time we have been able to measure, in addition to that, both the masses and the radii of these habitable zone-type Earth-sized planets. These planets are among the best uh, in, in, of all the planets we know to follow up to see, for example, with the James Webb Space Telescope that we're going to launch last year, the atmospheres, and also to look at biosignatures, if there are any. The discovery gives us a hint that finding a second Earth is not just a matter of if, but when. Scientists believe, actually, that around every star there could be one planet. Take three, take five, take seven. And you can just imagine how many worlds are out there that have a shot to becoming a habitable ecosystem that we could explore. And what we really have in this story is a major step forward towards answering one of these very questions that are at the heart of so many of our philosophers of what we're thinking about when we're by ourselves. And that basically is, are we alone out there? We're making a step forward with this, a leap forward, in fact, towards answering that question. And I'm really excited uh, for you to hear about it now. Thanks, Thomas. So, Mikkel, can you tell us more about this finding? Sure. As Thomas mentioned, uh, we used a Spitzer Space Telescope with an uh, overgrown-based telescope to uh, discover around the same star not one, not two, but seven Earth-sized planets. And this is the first time that uh, so many Earth-sized planets are found around the same star. Furthermore, with three of them in the habitable zone. And the star itself is what is called an ultra-cooled dwarf, which is the least massive kind of stars that exist. And these stars are much smaller, much cooler than our sun. And still, they are very frequent in, at the scale of our galaxy, more frequent than solar-type stars. And if you look at this illustration, you see uh, the comparison between a basketball 
and a golf ball. Well, in our case, the, the basketball would be the sun, and the golf ball, it would be trapeze one. So trapeze one is much cooler, much smaller than our sun, and so the planets it's in its habitable zone are much closer to it, very close to it, with very short orbital periods. And in the, this graphics, what you can see are the planets uh, which are around, which were found around Trappist one, with the three of them which are in the habitable zone, so, or so-called the Goldilocks zones, where liquid water could exist, is the most likely to exist at the surface of a rocky planet. Having three of these Earth-sized planets in this habitable zone is very promising for the search for life beyond our solar system. So what can you tell us about these distant planets? Well, we have measured with Spitzer very, very precisely their sizes. And furthermore, we have, thanks to Spitzer too, uh, preliminary uh, measurements of their masses for six of them. And for one of them, our measurement is precise enough to strongly suggest a water-rich composition, which is very exciting because this is one of the planets in the habitable zone. Furthermore, these planets are orbiting so close to the stars that they must be or they are probably tidally locked, which means they always face the star with the same sight, like the moon, to the Earth. And so if you look at this uh, animation, you can see uh, a view of tidally locked planet with a permanent day sight and a permanent night sight. The Trappist-1 planet could be just like this. Now what is also exciting here about this system is that the planets are so close to each other. If you were on the surface of one of these planets, you would have a a wonderful view on the other planets. You wouldn't see them uh, like uh, we see Venus or Mars, like dots of light. But as you can see in the next illustration, you would see them really as we see the moon. You would see worlds with, uh, which are very big. You could see the structures on these worlds. They would be as large as the moon and even larger for some of them. So it would be a, a wonderful view on these planets. Thanks, Mikkel. So, Sean, can you give us an idea or more context to discovery and why Spitzer played such a vital role? Absolutely, Felicia. i first like to say that, I, in my opinion, this is the most exciting discovery we've had yet with Spitzer in its 14 year, almost 14 years of operation. As you can see in the graphic, uh, the initial discovery of the TRAPPIST-1 system was by the TRAPPIST telescope in Chile in 2016. And it, Immediately after that, we started doing intensive follow-up with a lot of ground-based telescopes and more than 20 days of observa continuous observations with Spitzer. And what we're able to find is that we confirmed two of the planets that were found in the initial discovery and then found five more planets for a total of seven planets in the system, which is, which is pretty exciting. Now, TRAPPIST-1 is an ultra-cool dwarf, and that means that it's much brighter in the infrared, thousands of times brighter in the infrared than in the visible. So it makes it ideal to use Spitzer, which is an infrared telescope, to do the follow-up on this system.